is AIN TV and I'm Charles Alcock. Here at Sikorsky, they're so busy with new product developments, they barely have time to think about how the economy is doing today. Right now they have no less than seven new aircraft at various stages of development and this includes the new X2 technology demonstrator. Now today, Sikorsky's chief test pilot showed the crowds here at Heli Expo some film of the, of the X2 in various modes of flight demonstration. The X2 demonstrator is based on our advancing blade concepts aircraft, the XH-59, and it's a suite of advanced technologies by today's standards. And uh, today with me I've got Randy Padfield, who is editor-in-chief of Aviation International News. As it happens, Randy is a helicopter pilot. Randy, you were watching that film yeah. with us. It yeah. showed uh, Sikorsky putting the X-2 through its paces. What sort of things did you pick up on? I noticed uh, the aircraft didn't seem entirely stable. Should that surprise us? That's uh, precisely what I saw too, Charles. Mm. Uh, in the, I should point out that they've only flown the X-2 for three flights for a total of about 2.2 hours. And they've only test, or tested the, prop, the pusher prop on the back on the ground. So the flight was just with the main rotors. In a hover, you could see that the blades were steady, but the fuselage was just wobbling a little bit. Now, the, the test pilot did explain that, the fact that um, with the fly-by-wire system, it was actually required a little bit of uh, uh, tweaking and, and the, the addition of a, a SAS or a stability augmentation system, which they plan to do as a next step. Right, so they're sort of at the first stage and they're going to move, I think, through this year, gradually right. uh, bringing all these elements together. Um, does that mean that progressively they'll increase the speed? Where are they going with well, the Well, there speed? are actually four phases of the flight test program and they're going to uh, of course, get flying with the uh, the prop rotor first up to I think about 40 knots. They flew it at about 32 knots in a hover hover mode, uh, and then increasing it to uh, eventually uh, 250 knots, which they they hope to do. Uh, so of course it's all about speed. But the the technology demonstrator we're seeing flying today is is a pretty scaled down model. Um, I suppose the next challenge then is to scale up the size of that airframe into, into various particular applications. Is that going to be quite tough for them? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, Charlie, uh, it's, a, it's going to be a very difficult process. This is the X-2. It stands for experimental. And you have to remember that experimental aircraft uh, or prototypes really need a lot of work before you can put it into a, a commercial application. Uh, as an example, the uh, XV-15, which is the forerunner of the Bell 609, was first launched in 1971, and we don't expect the uh, X, uh, Bell 609 to be certified at least until 2011. That's 40 years. I, I graduated from college in 1971, started flying then, and to think that it would take 40 years uh, before I'd actually be able to fly one is amazing. Now, I'm not saying that Sikorsky is Bell or Bell Sikorsky, but it's certainly going to take some time. Uh, to take a, an aircraft from the experimental stage and design and create a uh, civil aircraft that can be certified. So it's a major long-term commitment for a company Absolutely. like Sikorsky. Absolutely. Um, and of course speed will be the main differentiator once it eventually gets to the market. Um, do you, are you convinced that there are operators out there who would really care enough about that speed factor uh, to, to feel that this was worth waiting for, if you like? Well, uh, of course, Bell is convinced there's a, there are operators who want to have that extra speed, and it's all going to depend on the mission. Now, any type of helicopter, it's, it's worth its while if it has to take off from a confined area, such as a heliport or an oil platform, if either your, your starting point or your destination is a confined area. If not, you can fly an airplane. So uh, offshore operators going out long distances should be interested. Again, they're going to have to weigh the, the costs of, of this against a conventional helicopter, which uh, can go up to easily 150, 160 knots right now at cruise speed. Uh, well, of course, the X-2 uh, is an unconventional aircraft. You've got right. the, the coaxial rotors uh, on top, and at the back you've got this propeller. As a helicopter pilot, do you think that would result in, in fairly radically different handling characteristics for the aircraft? Actually, I, I don't think so. Uh, the, the coaxial rotor, rotor system actually replaces a tail rotor, but you still use tail rotor pedals to uh, change the heading uh, in a hover and also in flight. And um, I, I would also say that uh, Sikorsky's fly-by-wire system, which is going to be, have to be very sophisticated as well, will make flying this aircraft probably a lot easier than uh, current helicopters. 
Excellent, okay. Well, we've had some fascinating insights to where Sikorsky's going with the X2. Hopefully by the Heli Expo show next year, we're going to find out whether indeed they have hit those speed targets that they are going for. For AIN TV, I'm Charles Alcock.